The year 2019 marks the 40th anniversary of the Grenada Revolution. It began in March 1979 when Sir Eric Gehry's Grenada United Labour Party was overthrown by the new dual movement-led People's Revolutionary Army. Maurice Bishop was installed as Prime Minister of the People's Revolutionary Government. During his time as Prime Minister, Bishop, intending to boost the island's tourism product, received aid from the Soviet Union and Cuba and constructed an aircraft runway. This relationship with known communist countries concerned United States President Ronald Reagan. Around the same time, Bishop's second-in-command, Bernard Cord, held contrasting views on the leadership of Grenada, and this eventually led to the splintering of the party. In October of 1983, Bernard Cord led a coup and had Maurice Bishop placed under house arrest. Bishop and several government ministers were later executed. Spurred into action by this political unrest, the United States, Barbados, Jamaica and Dominica staged the military intervention called Operation Urgent Fury. In part two of Remembering Grenada, Adrian Bowen joins Calvin Cozier as they recount their time as young soldiers in the Caribbean Peacekeeping Force, which was deployed to Grenada in 1983 and 84. Well, if you look back at it, we, 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 we had a little, a, a little history of that in a sense, because um, as we know, and Adrian probably knows, that there, there, there was a, a, um, a something happened in Grenada, not in Grenada, sorry, Vincent. in St. In Vincent back in 79, where Barbados troops were also um, deployed there. As a matter of fact, the mighty Gabby sang a song he has um, the, the, the boots, I think it is. Boots, boots. Yeah, more boots. boots, some more yeah. boots. Um, he, he actually, won some of his lines in that song has, was spoken, spoken about, yeah, yeah what happened about St. Vincent. So, yes, there was some knowledge of that it could have probably happened within the Caribbean country. I think, too, that at that, that, that period in, in our history, the whole communist ideology was extremely strong. Um, coming out of the 60s, where you had the black power movement and so on. So there were a lot of ideologies, and, and therefore there were, there were people who wanted to, to push the ideologies in the Caribbean islands. Yes. Right, so there were, there, were, there were a number of issues that would have happened during that period in our history. Um, in Grenada, they had the, um, you had Morris Bishop, who was through the Gary regime in 1979. And then uh, Bernard Cord and his team, Hassan Austin, then um, had the, the, the revolution then in, in 1983. Uh, so you would have seen that evolving over the years. We had Abu Bakr later after that in 1990 in Trinidad. So that era was being, a, I, would, I would like to consider it as a, almost like a volatile era in terms of our political history in the Caribbean. Um, unlike Calvin, um, I went to Grenada in the early in early in 1984. I was deployed in 1984. After these guys would have gone down with the initial um, operation Urgent Fury, uh, we would have gone down though after that in, in a peacekeeping mode, and, and we did a lot of um, a lot of guard duty and, and, and we did duty for the Governor General, protected the Governor General. So there were special. Um, um, special assignments to protect the Governor General's home and so on. We did that, and then we were also assigned specifically to the to the prison, St. George's Prison, um, that was to do guard over the political prisoners. So we were we were allocated duties to to watch Bernard Cord and Hudson Austin and the likes of those guys, uh, simply because they wanted the wanted to divorce the local. Um, Constabulary from having to be involved with, with them. So as we were part of the Caribbean Peacekeeping Forces, then that was part of our duties. Uh, when we got to 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 Grenada, even even at that stage, because we went down you know, six months after the actual intervention, but even when we went down, um, there was still the option of um, some persons who then say they want to go. I I wanted to go. I had I just done 16 weeks of boot camp, I did all the training. I was ready to, to get into active duty. And, and I, I was 19 years old as well. 
as a young guy, and I wanted to get into Judy. I felt that, you know, I did the training, I'm up to it, let me get on there. Uh, and when I got to Grenada, I found that the, the, the environment was still subdued. Um, there were a lot of areas that didn't have electricity. Um, you can still see the impact of the actual um, intervention. Um, one of the most telling things to me would have been to, to go up to Fort Rupert and actually look at the, the location in Fort Rupert where um, Bishop and his, sure. his, mm -hmm. his members were, were executed. And, and there are some real blaring memories um, coming, up, coming back from, from Grenada at that time. The people, yes, were, were happy to see us, but they still had, because of the same ideology, they still had people who felt as if we were a type of imposing. Um, you know, they didn't like the fact that they had armed, armed soldiers um, around their streets and guarding their government general and so on and so forth, but that's the aftermath of, of a war. So, but that, that was the atmosphere at the time. So there were some people who still had the, the linkage to the whole Morris Bishop ideology of communism and so on. One of the things I saw down there, the first thing I did, Gary Judy, I did Gary Judy, uh, a place called Fort Frequenti, and that, that, that was the career house that was full of um, guns, guns and, gun, and, weapons, and, and, yeah. and weapons. Some of them were broken weapons, mm. weapons in half, full weapons, whatever, but it was a warehouse full, full. of weapons. Yeah. So you can imagine the amount of weapons that was on that country. Mm. If, you get a, if you can get a warehouse full of weapons I mean, after you had a war. Mm. Um, and as I said, it was very dark. I remember, I remember it being very, very dark, a very dark area. And you still felt a sense of, of danger. I mean, we knew the fighting was finished. But every now and again, we hear a little sporadic gunfire up in the hills. Um, I guess people just want to remind you that we still got a couple of guns over here. Uh, but it was, um, at 19 years old, it was an experience to be down there and know that you are in a, in a position of authority at 19 years old in, in someone else's country. But um, it was interesting, it was, it was exhilarating, but it was, it was an experience to just to be there alone. Were, were the Americans still there when you went? Yes, the Americans were there up to 1985. I think they left, they left the end in 84. Yeah, they left the end then in 84. Then they had no in 84. But there were, there were, there were a small unit. There was yeah. a large contingent. Yeah, yeah. There was, right, not right, uh, exactly. On the, on the same day yeah. the invasion, because uh, as a matter of fact, um, to my recollection, uh, after the invasion, in, in the 29th, maybe the 30th or so, those guys started pulling out. Some yeah. of them started pulling out, you know, from Grenada. Uh, they, they left some of the equipment uh, with, with us too, because actually, because Grenada didn't really had any uh, vehicles that we could have used, but they left with the right. uh, some of the equipment with us. Um, but and they and they also conducted training. Yeah. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what we called. We called it. They did, we did um, demolition training and mm -hmm. mortar fire training and some of them. Mm -hmm. So they conducted some training. So as we were down there, obviously we were still being trained, um, you know, in terms of the, the necessary skills we would, have, we would need. And that's what they did. And then we left. We well, I don't have the exact dates, but then we pulled out of Grenada in 1985. 84, uh, 84, uh, 85, 85, 85, 85. My last duty would be 85. Yeah, so I did about five tours mm -hmm. in Grenada from 84 to 85. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they vary. Some of some would have been like a month. Some was like six weeks. I think the longest might have been two months. Uh, I think the longest might have been two months. Yeah. And they spent one of them. spent almost a whole month working in the jail, um, in the prison. And when you work in the prison, that's it. You work in the prison, so you yeah. actually you are in prison in for prison. that time. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that was hard for me. Uh, I'm outgoing guy, so being in prison was a fight. But uh, yeah, that was hard for me. But I remember spending about a month working in St. George's prison. I, I could, I could um, speak to what Adrian said in a sense about, about uh, the question you asked, it, how, if you were welcome or whatnot. Um, I, remember, I remember at certain stages when we were going out with performing our duties, whether it be um, doing guard duty or close to the barracks or maybe on the road, Protecting someone, you probably hear someone um, saying, "I want to be just we don't go home with those long guns." And you know, yeah, that was actually after, after you know the initial um, fire gunfight war zone thing had boiled down completely. But so I, as as he said, they probably was getting a sense of, "Look, y'all here too long," <laughs> you know. 
Yeah. 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 How much? So when you came back home, did you still follow what was happening in Grenada? Yeah, we had to. We had to because because we knew for a fact that we came home for a period of time and then we'd be back back in that year, that same country again, performing duties again. So we we actually try to keep you know and and and. We had we had forces people changing all the time. So the guys that came up with us know, well, look, this is what happening, you know, <laughs> telling us, well, look, this place is still, you know. So we we, we actually got um, news and, and information all the time, and we were we were keen about it because, like I said, we knew we, we had to go back at some point in time. So. Um, are you still? Are you still, or were you at any point still in contact with people that, with Grenadians that you would have met there? No, I'm not in contact with any of them now. Um, after, maybe after, I, uh, there were a few, there were a few, but at this stage, no, no. No, I don't have, I don't have any contact now. Um, I, I would have been back to Grenada a couple of times since then for different reasons, um, but I, I don't have any direct contact with the persons I would have met back in that time, during that era, none at all. Yeah, funny enough, I've never been back, <laughs> you know, and I was, I, was, I was telling my wife um, the other day, yeah, I, I want to go back to see what it's like now, mm. what, you know, what changes has been made and probably infrastructure, you know, pertaining to the roads and, you know, because mm -hmm. back then the, the, the roads was, was horrible, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was horrible. You had probably had one road leading from, from, from St. George's to Pearls, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. 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 One road. In Granny yeah. Time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, you know, the thing is that um, I've been back to Grenada, and Grenada has changed quite a bit from that time. But back in the time, as Cover mentioned, it was, it was, I really just remember it being very dark. Um, there were a lot of places without electricity. Yeah. Um, it had kind of a. A sadness, if you want to call it that, that was that was that enveloped the country. It was it was just a sad period, as the truth, and uh, as it's to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, he said about the electricity, but the most thing that would that, that would have probably I remember most about the utilities is the water. The water was horrible. Water, water. It was actually <laughs> next to none. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, next to none. I and mean, when you do get a shower, the water is running like. You know, drip, drip, drip. So the, the water was rationed too as well. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. Um, the Cubans, um, the Cubans were apparently a, a part of contention in terms of the Americans and the concern about communism. Do you all have any experience with any of the Cubans when you were there? Uh, when we land, when we land, uh, the, uh, we pass an area uh, uh, there was Cubans in a cordon off in a, in a, in a, behind some Constantino wire and whatnot, and that's basically the contact that we had with the Cubans. We just passed them and saw them. They were under guard, and uh, that was it. That was it, as far as I can remember. That was it. Uh, I, I think when they were being sent back to to um, to Cuba, because they they were sent back to Cuba. We, we we played a role in that too as well because when it, the planes was on the runway, we were, we were providing some form of security at that point in time too. But actual contact, like you know, conversations and stuff like that, no. Um, we had other operations other than that, not as significant maybe as that for a white, but other operations that we would have been involved in. So you know, as you as you're involved in operation, you're involved in operation, you do it, it's finished. And you roll over, and you go again move to, to to move on to whatever else is coming down the pipeline. So, I wouldn't say that it's something that I, that I would have dwelled on, but for sure, it's an experience that that would be a lasting experience for me. Mm -hmm. um, especially, especially the fact I was so young at the time. I think because I think that helped really shape me too in terms of. Um, opening my eyes as a young guy in terms of the things that are happening because the, the, the death of Morris Bishop and his, his team was, was horrific and as I told you if you go to Fort Rupert even now I think they still have it as a place you can go and tour it I don't know if it's, if it's still open up but if you go to Fort Rupert and you see those the sides of those um, holes that are left in the wall where they were excuse, and you also see the, the jump off 
when people got so scared they jumped over this wall it was going a hundred feet high mm -hmm. and, and and fell to the death and so on so you know when, when you get there and you see these things uh, you, you, you tend to realize you know there's so much more is going on that like you're already aware of in your small your smaller hundred and square miles of Barbados so that was just a um a, 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 a opening experience for me at the time.